I've actually got bets on as to who's going to fall off one of these stools first. I've got all my money on me. <laughs> Being not half as elegant. No, no, oh, no. no. I'm, I'm very clumsy. Very, very clumsy. <laughs> you say that, but how can you be clumsy after all the amazing stuff we've seen? Well, uh, no, my mother sent me to ballet to get me conformed because I used to fall over everything and bump into everything. Very bad about my space around me. So we can thank your mother for yeah. it all. Um, uh, Darcy and I have already had a very tumultuous start to the day. Um, uh, Angus, Darcy's husband, left his bag on the plane. Yep. Um, I went to a completely different hotel uh, for this lunch. So uh, when I discovered that no one was there, Darcy's without his lap, um, lap Angus yeah. is without his laptop. And diary. And, and our wallet is and missing. Yes. <laughs> yes, if anybody's got my husband's wallet, please can you give it to If anyone's got it, head to the shops ASAP because they haven't cancelled it yet. Um, <laughs> don't, I'm joking. Um, look, I, I'm going to be totally honest with you, Darcy. I, I, you know, I've seen a few ballets. I, 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 I love ballet. I look at you and just think you're absolutely amazing. But I didn't know a hell of a lot of, um, about you before I was asked to do this interview. And I always um, think, you know, it's, it's, it's no point reading biographies or, or, or their own websites. Let's think outside the square and, and see what other people are saying about them. I know. And these are just a few of the glowing testimonials from directors, choreographers and your coach as well. Now, um, uh, young James already stole one of them. But... Uh, <laughs> One is, words cannot do justice to her extraordinary talent and beauty. Wrong or right? Wrong. wrong, wrong, wrong. <laughs> Hugely versatile, a dream to coach. Uh, Darcy's dancing was like nothing we had seen before. Uh, you have been called Britain's greatest ballerina. Um, you know, I'm just so curious. No? no oh, yeah, no, no, no. I'm, I'm going to stick with it. Absolutely. <laughs> Good on you. Um, what I'm curious about, Darcy, is this something you are, um, is it a natural born thing or did you just work damn hard at it? Um, it's funny because I didn't actually want to be a dancer. I actually wanted to be a gymnast oh. and my gymnastic teacher said, oh yeah, ballet's really good for all the floor work. And I was like, great, great, I'll keep my ballet going. But I only really did ballet because my friends did it. And uh, my mum sent me because I had rather too much energy and I used to bump into a lot of things. But uh, I only really fell in love with it much later as a child, sort of the age of 11, 12. Which is comparatively quite late, isn't it's, it? It is late for that kind of bug um, because you do have to start young as a dancer because it's such a physical, it's like being an athlete nowadays. And uh, it, wa it was odd because I wasn't passionate about it, but it's extraordinary how that's taken over. And I, what I got addicted to very much was the training in the studio. And I just loved perfecting the steps and that's what I got really obsessed with. It wasn't really, uh, I, don't, I hadn't seen many ballets or performances as such, so I didn't fall in love with the theatre first, I fell more in love with the actual mm. training. So are you a perfectionist in everyday things or is it just? I've definitely relaxed off, yeah, nice. <laughs> but I was, yeah, I have been a little bit neurotic. <laughs> as a child though, did you ever get inspired? Was there one thing that actually inspired you to be on stage? Um, well, I was a bit of a show-off, I know mm. that, and um, my mother had a lot of mirrors in the house, and I used to look at myself a lot, <laughs> and, and, and I do remember being told off by my dad to say that, you know, I'm going to cover every mirror, if you don't speak to me, not through the mirror, at my face, really? like this, I used to go, so anyway. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> but it was uh, a little bit embarrassing, but I apparently was just always like that from dot, wow. so um, my mum led kind of pushed that path yeah. that I was going to be on stage in some sort of way whether it was ballet or contemporary or you know even if I did theatre design I would have been happy. Fantastic yet um, I hear you play yeah. football. Is, is I that did true? Play, yes I did play football yeah well I did like the boys as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay I love my ballet but yeah. No, that's uh, your Italian stallions and Italian all your gorgeous team. partners. I've been very fortunate yeah. How does it, how do you, yeah, I mean, it's extraordinary going from football to uh, uh, to ballet. Well, thank, thankfully for us, you're better at ballet. <laughs> um, so how old were you when you actually started your professional training? Um, I was five when I did ballet every Saturday with my friends, um, but I was often under the piano for most of that. Uh, my mother would come <laughs> pick me up and the teacher would say, sorry, she's been under there the whole time. So I was a little bit stubborn, so when it pleased me, would I get up and dance? And, and I didn't get into the Royal Ballet School until I was 13. 
So that was my late change where I suddenly said that I really want to go and train solidly just on dance. Before that, I did go to a stage school, but only for about two years, which was lovely because I got to experience all the other things that you can be a performer in, mm -hmm. which was a lot of fun. But um, I, as soon as I started the Royal Ballet School, it was just like nothing else. And Royal Ballet didn't actually last that long. You eventually got to, um, the late Sir Kenneth Macmillan's attention. What? Uh, yeah. Talk us through that process. When I was 16, we, we would do this school performance and uh, one of his works was being done in our school performance and I didn't appreciate it, but he actually chose me for that role. And it was, it was very young to have a main role in the school performance because I had another year to go at school. And um, it was just extraordinary because he'd seen me then and it kept me in his mind until I left school. And then I went to a touring company at the age of... 17, 18, and I was with them for a year, and he came in and said, okay, I want you to create this new work with me. Wow, and what was that, the Prince of? Prince of Pagodas. Mm -hmm. And uh, this was just like, you know, I, I don't think I felt numb. I didn't actually believe, and the director I was with was Sir Peter Wright, who was just the most amazing guy, and I actually felt very sad about leaving the touring company, which was known as Sadler's Wells Royal Ballet. And I'd only been with them a year, and I'd learned all their repertoire. So their production, Sleeping Beauty, their Swan Lake, their, their everything. And then suddenly I had to leave and go to the resident company, which is the Royal Ballet, and work with Kenneth, but then learn a whole new repertoire. So another new... But you had quite some time to learn that repertoire. Wasn't there a year between the performance? But, but yes, we actually worked on this three-act ballet for a year, but that was because of Kenneth's health. He wasn't very well, but it gave me a chance also, I think, to get settled within the company because nobody knew who I was. I just got kind of taken from the corps de ballet from one company and made a soloist yeah. and come into the resident company. So it was all a bit kind of bang, bang, bang. So you must have done a pretty okay job because <laughs> you were made a principal at the end of that first show. Yeah, which was another... I actually said to the director, are you sure? <laughs> are you sure? Uh, he did it on stage as well in front of the whole company and I was just really taken back. I couldn't believe it. And I think it took... One thing I think that's helped me through my career is it's always taken time to en let anything sink in. Yeah. So I, I don't go into total shock and it builds. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, it was uh, an amazing time. But it obviously shows why you're grounded. I mean, have you always sort of, uh, not in a negative way, but doubted yourself and perhaps... You always. Know, yeah. yeah, always. I, I think it's part of the nature of being a dancer. You you're never satisfied and there could always be something better and are they sure about that and should I be doing this role or I don't want to get typecast and you know, you're constantly doubting mm. yourself. It's a, uh, I think but it's I think that's part. probably the, you know, the key to success in life anyway, yeah. is to, to doubt yourself and to strive for per Keep perfection, pushing, which yeah. you clearly pushing. have done. Um, and the youngest ballerina in the history of the Royal Ballet to be promoted to principal, is it, that was at the time? Um, yes, at the time. I mean, the Royal Ballet as such, you know, there was... Uh, when the Royal Ballet first started in 1931, uh, it was this smaller company. It was a different company right. then. So the, the principals, like Margot was a very young principal, Margot Fontaine and stuff like that. So it's just for this company, yeah. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> well, it's still a good title to have, <laughs> isn't it? Um, you were, it, and it just snowballed from there. Uh, you danced every main principal role numerous times in your 20-year career. Was there any that you didn't actually perform? Yes, I was quite devastated. I never got to see Don... Don Quixote, Don Q, which is one of those ballets that when I was at school I was desperate to do. It's, it's a very jumpy role and, and that was my strength. I was very good at jumps and so I was just desperate to do this role. And every time I came, I used to do the general rehearsal, so costume was like a performance mm -hmm. with the orchestra in costume and everything. And I'd, I'd be doing that general rehearsal and I'd suddenly either pull my hamstring or I'd go over my ankle, just for the excitement, I think, because I used to, couldn't contain myself. <laughs> I was getting to do Don Q. And it came back twice, I think, during my time in the company, and I injured myself twice. Oh, which was, that's And so that just kind of goes with the, uh, the background of being a dancer, because it's that physical. You, you just have to pace yourself for some things, and I wasn't very good at that. Do you feel like your career's not complete because you hadn't done Don Q? Or? No, well, at least I got to perform it in the general. And that oh, was that was okay. with an audience. So they, 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 they're called like the friends. Yep. And so the kind of the nicer audience. Oh, good. <laughs> so you got <laughs> to do it at least. Yeah, at least I did. Um, I just couldn't move the following day. <laughs> <laughs> For a few days. Yeah. 